Okay, let's get right to our top story. Only 10 days after a moon mission by a U.S. private company failed, Japan has hit the mark, becoming the fifth country in the world after the U.S., Russia, China, and India to land on Earth's only natural satellite. That means it has landed. Japan's smart lander touched down on the moon's surface shortly after midnight Tokyo time. The craft, about the size of an SUV, used new pinpoint landing technology to hit its target. So, say the word space and we all get excited. Probably not as much as CTV science and technology specialist Dan Riskin, who I'm sure can't wait to talk about this. Hi, Dan. Good to see you. Well, the probe lands on the moon, a pretty big feat, of course. Why didn't we see any celebrating by Japan right away? Yeah, I was surprised, too, not to see the high fives that we look forward to so much. But I think a big lesson was learned in 2016 when the European Space Agency landed on a comet. And they did the high fives and then found out later that their spacecraft had ricocheted off the surface and traveled several kilometers for several hours before landing again and getting lost. And so I think with this mission, they wanted to make sure everything was perfect before they celebrated too much. And indeed, what they learned is not everything is perfect. It's having some problems with its solar panels. And so this mission is going to be much shorter in all likelihood than they had anticipated. Okay. I mentioned in my intro that, that uh, the pinpoint landing technology was significant. Explain mm. why it's significant. Yeah, I, so when a spacecraft is going to land on the moon and it fires its thrusters, current technology, or at least the technology up until today, had it landing in an area of tens of kilometers. Uh, so they're a great big, huge target on the surface of the planet. This new technology has a computer processor on board the spacecraft that can look down, see the pattern of craters, and figure out where it is based on maps it has in its own memory. That's a huge advance. And as Japan likes to put it, we're shifting now from landing where we can to landing where we want. So what else is significant about this landing and this mission, in fact? Well, I, so geopolitically, it's a big deal. Japan's the fifth uh, country to land on the moon. That's a big deal. But this ability to pick your spot where you want to land and bringing the computers on board those spacecraft to do those kinds of maneuvers, I think is going to be a game changer. And I think that technology has got a lot of people very excited. So overall, big picture, Dan, what does Japan hope to learn with this mission to the moon? Well, I think what Japan's learning right now is how to move very fast because they had anticipated solar panels that would give them the luxury of time and let them use energy as they wanted to. But without the solar panels working, they've got some battery power left and they have to make as much data happen as they possibly can. So already they've sent the data back to Earth from the images that were collected during the landing. But now they may have just a few hours to have that spacecraft do all the things they'd hoped it would do over several days. So we'll see what, uh, what data come out of this, but it's exciting nonetheless. Okay, Dan, thanks. Always fun to chat with you.